Hey guys, it's Jen here with Bushcraft Diva, and I want to welcome you back to our series on emergency preparedness. Now, in our last video, we took a look at what it would take for you to prepare your family and your home for a two-week emergency situation, whether that be another shelter in place or a natural disaster or some other kind of an emergency. So today, we're going to take a look at a 72-hour bug out situation where you just have to grab your bags and get out of Dodge. So, and we're actually going to divide this up into two videos because there's so much content. So today we're going to take a look at our checklist and everything you need to get. And this is your assignment for the weekend. Once you go through the list, I want you to go to the stores and get whatever it is on the list that you do not have. Then we're going to come back and we're going to pack these bags together. So they're packed in a manner that you understand it's grab and go, you know where everything is and it's as lightweight and easy to handle as possible. So let's take a look at what it is we need and let's go. Now, many of you may not be familiar with the rule of three. So here goes, you can survive three minutes without oxygen or air getting to your brain. You can survive three hours without appropriate shelter under hazardous conditions. Three days you can survive without water and you can survive without food for three weeks. Now those parameters in place, we are going to build our go bags or as they're sometimes called bug out bags. First of all, we're going to take a look at air and filtration. Um, in the day and age of COVID, masks are pretty much mandatory. Um, you may not be under a mask mandate, but you never know where you're going to wind up and you never know if where you wind up, there's going to be some kind of outbreak. So get yourself a mask and a good mask. This one I chose because it has a filtration system and it's actually got disposable filters that you can pop in and out. And to be honest with you, the reason I chose this one is because it was the easiest one for me to breathe through at the gym. Now they make them in both adult and child sizes. You will want one mask per member of your family and make sure you have plenty of interchangeable filters. Now from there, we're going to go on and we're going to build the rest of our list, our checklist for our go bags. And I'm just going to every single item off um, for you again in a quick checklist. And next to each one, I want you to put a little box. And if you have it in your home, after you have this list put together, put a check by it. Any box that is unchecked, that is your assignment for this weekend. I want you to go out and purchase the items that you do not already have in your home. We're going to come back early next week, right after the, right after we get through this weekend. And we're actually going to pack the packs together. So you see how a go bag is actually built in a way that is organized and makes sense to you. And it's just accessible so you can grab and go. So let's take a look at what you need. So first let's review the 10 C's of survivability. One, cutting tool. Two, combustion device. Three, cover. Four, container. Five, cork. The remaining 10 C's, six, cotton bandanas. Seven, cargo tape. Eight, compass. Nine, cloth sail needle. And 10, a candling device. First, let's take a look at cutting tools. You will need a knife, either fixed blade or folding, but something sturdy and durable. A pocket or Swiss army knife, a folding saw, an ax or hatchet, and a small folding shovel. As with any sharp object, make sure whoever is using it is trained to use it in a safe manner. Next up is combustion, which gives you fire. Remember, you've got three hours to build a shelter, and that includes heat, so you want a lighter and matches. As a third option, you want a ferro rod or flint and steel or magnifying glass if you're proficient in any of these. Cover is also going to protect you from the elements, so you will need a tent, a sleeping bag, or a heavy blanket, preferably wool, a tarp, orange on one side, reflective on the other, an emergency blanket, also orange and reflective, and a mylar or space blanket. Next, you need a 32 ounce container. Why 32 ounces? Because most water disinfectant systems are designed to work by the American leader or court. Get your hands on a stainless steel or titanium container so you can use it to cook in as well. If you can't get your hands on that, have some kind of metal container to cook in and Nalgene or a bladder pack will do in a pinch. Cordage is used for tying things together and tying things down. 
Paracord is absolutely essential to your pack. You want a seven strand paracord at about 100 feet. You also want number 36 tarred bank line, a one pound roll, and a paracord bracelet just to clip to the outside of your pack. It doesn't take up any room and it's handy to have around. Cotton bandanas are an essential part of your pack and the 101 uses of the Shemag makes it the go-to for outdoor enthusiasts and survivalists alike. It is a lightweight, cotton woven material, generally three foot by three foot in size. And because of its size, it garners so many uses from cooling your body temperature, use as a makeshift pillow, carrying goods. It can even be used as a sling or a tourniquet. You can also go with a standard bandana, but whatever you choose, make sure that your cloth is 100% cotton in the events that you need to burn it down into char cloth. Cargo tape is plain old duct tape. Get yourself a roll of two inch Gorilla brand tape and wrap about a half inch spool along the top of your lighter, another half inch below. Or you can just clip the whole ring to the outside of your bag and go. You're gonna need a compass to guide you, so do not cheap out on this one. Make sure it has the following features, an azimuth, a mirror, and if possible, a magnifying glass. A cloth sail needle is necessary for sewing and repair. Now this is not a craft needle, it is a very large needle with a wedge at the front and a very sharp point. Magnetize it ahead of time if you know how to for an impromptu compass, and you can always just duct tape it somewhere inconspicuous so it's out of the way until you need it. A candling device is a headlamp, not a flashlight, for hands-free use. Multiple settings, including different colors and a flash feature are preferable. These are fully adjustable headlamps that will fit youth and adults alike. Now let's talk about first aid. The first thing you need is a bag large enough to fit your supplies, but not too big that it's gonna become bulky and take up too much space. I recommend red, that way it's easily identifiable yet distinguishable from other emergency items such as an orange signaling panel. You wanna stock it with bandages and band-aids, antibacterial wipes, gauze pads, medical gloves, a medical instrument kit, and first aid instructions, antiseptic wipes, antibacterial ointment, burn gel, a splint. Now you can add a sling, but remember we can use a shemag for that and a tourniquet, but that's all something we can use paracord for. For sustenance, you want a water filtration system such as life straws or a grail bottle. Water purification or more accurately, water disinfectant tabs or drops. Rations, three minimum per day. So you're gonna want at least nine and a fishing kit, just in case you have to get out there and find some food yourself. Sanitary items, toilet paper, maxi pads and tampons. Yes, men, you need these too. They're useful first aid tools in case there's a heavy bleed. Face and body wipes, toothbrush and toothpaste, and disposable diapers and wipes, if applicable. Aside from what you've already got on, including a coat and good boots or shoes, your body cover consists of a change of clothes, waterproof jacket or rain suit, stocking cap, cold weather gloves, an extra pair of socks in case yours get wet, and hand warmers. Your medications are critical. Make sure you have painkillers, at least two weeks of your prescription medications, at least two weeks of vitamins and supplements, a list of your medications, a list of your doctors and contact information, and some baby aspirin. Safety items include a whistle, three short blows followed by a pause and repeated as a standard SOS sign, pepper spray, Chem lights, much like those little glow sticks that we give to kids, you just snap them and they work as a candling device for long periods of time. Flares can be used to ward off predators and as a signaling device. You'll also want an orange signaling panel large enough to tape three large black X's on, also a universal sign of distress. Documentation. Now you want copies of all of this on a flash or thumb drive in a Ziploc bag in your pack. Emergency contact information, including doctor information, IDs, passport, all relevant permits, insurance for health, home, life, and auto, current pictures of family, pets, and homes, medical, dental records, and a current list of all your medications. Finally, miscellaneous items. You're going to need a map of the area or region, cell phones and chargers, a radio, either crank or battery, and if you can, two-way radios and CBs. A GPS tracking system will also come in handy. Emergency cash. Take what you need, but remember small bills are better. You are going to need extra batteries, a sewing kit, a crowbar, 
stuff sacks to cram all of our stuff in and cinch it down so it doesn't take too much room in our go bags, which is going to be a large backpack with padded shoulders and padded hips for comfort. You'll also need a small mirror and leashes and blankets for pets so they stay near and safe. All right, so you have everything now hopefully listed that you need for your go bag. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I have explained that there are many items that you may see on other lists that you don't necessarily need because we have multifunctional uh, tools that we are building into our go bags. So you don't need to bulk up your go bag with an extra tourniquet or something like that. So again, if you have any questions or concerns about that, drop it in the comments section and I am happy to answer any questions that you may have. And while you're in the comments section, hop up to the like and subscribe buttons, hit both of those and that notification bell so you never miss another video. And as always, you can find everything you need, including Diva gear at bushcraftdiva.com. Thanks for joining me. Be safe and build those packs. You're not going to regret it because as long as you're prepared, you can do anything. Have a great evening. Thanks for joining me. Until next time.